And I did have a question for the panel. Um, it's the question that's near to me, and that is it, there's a timeliness about this panel because, as you know, President Barack Obama just came back from Ghana. And some of you have heard his comments, I certainly did, his comments um, um, that he made while he was in Ghana. And I just wanted to ask the panelists, how would Ama Atta Aidu have reacted to one, his visit, and two, the comments that uh, President Obama made? Anybody wants to jump in on that? Well, I, I would say, first of all, that I'm sure Amma would say, ask Michelle what she thought. <laughs> okay. And ask those little girls. <laughs> yes. Because going through the, the slave castle as a person from the African diaspora is an amazingly emotional experience. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed he was able to, of course, he's a president, so he can do that, to come out and talk as he did. I was a little concerned about him flattening it out to sort of just human cruelty. It was a good moment. I thought yes. he could have really highlighted how we all Specific. got to be in the new yeah. world, so-called, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. we got to be in this African diaspora, so-called. And of course, the, the political questions now that we need to engage, and I'm sure he will do it later, but I think it was in a moment that that was lost, unfortunately, yeah, because it was I straight out of the Cape Coast slave castle. Yeah, and he... He linked it to, to the whole cost fine, to the but it was not just human cruelty at that point. It needed yeah. a, a, spe a specificity, a focus that would pull out the specifics of African people's experiences in On that point. particular historical moment. Yeah. And then his return and what that means. On uh, point. That's, and that's... I think Amma, uh, with her understanding of Pan-Africanism, would have recognized his position now and how he is respected in the world as a leader, not just of the, of the US, but as a okay, black yeah. leader. Yeah. Um, and also, of course, the, the questions of, of his place now in history and its link to the past. So you feel there was a little missed opportunity there? Definitely, and that's why okay. I say he should have asked Michelle what she thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, you wanted to say something too? Well, um, Amate Idu is one of the people who has constantly drawn attention to the subject of what happened mm -hmm. between us and the rest of us. Mm -hmm. In other words, the silences that surround why African peoples are all over the world mm -hmm. and those of us in Africa don't talk about it, okay? My grandfather is from Jamaica. He came and he settled in Ghana. We called him Daddy Bruni, Daddy the white man. White doesn't mean color. White is location. White is the West. White is a multiplicity of things. My grandfather was a white man to us, but he was a black man in the colonial structure that pertained at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even I grew up knowing there is Jamaica and there is us, but the sense of ourselves was based in the notion of the son of Africa who is the product of a Scottish colonial civil servant and an African woman in Jamaica coming back home. To God. Mm -hmm. The irony is that my grandfather was, you know, I mean, the, the conflicted person. Um, he married my grandmother in ways that outsiders did not marry indigenous women. Most of them cohabited. My grandfather was warned that, you know, it's easier to just cohabit. And that particular one you should avoid because she is the daughter of this traditional ruler. And you don't really want to get tangled in their business. He did marry her. And he did get tangled in his blackness. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's an interesting word you use there about the silence. The Amata silence. broke it wide open. The silence between, And so, yeah, you yeah. know, that, that, that's a good... From good. that standpoint, even as we can look at 
Obama's visit and the comments that the media no. um, privileges right. mm -hmm. as missed opportunity. I also see him as a son of Africa, yeah. align him with Amate Yudu and those of us who are happy the silences are not kept under rocks. Okay. The Atlantic Ocean whispers it all the time, and if we listen, we'll know. Okay, just before they shut me out, I'm just going to go on with the questions, but before they do, I just want to make certain that I thank our panelists, who are Dr. Carol Boyce-Davies, Dr. Nana Ben-Horn, Dr. Tuzelin, Jita Allen, and Professor Rashida Ismaili. Um, I, I also want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Max Rodriguez, who is the founder of QBR and founder of the Harlem Book Fair that we are enjoying today. Um, this is his idea, his baby, so to speak, so I want to extend my gratitude and appreciation to him. So we can go on with the questions, and if we get cut off, you know why. <laughs>